A very warm welcome to yet another amazing section of the weather report. Now, the video that I'm about to show you is a weather report from the future. This has been projected basing on climate science, and we will be seeing the weather that we're expecting in 2050. Let's take a look, and I'll be right back. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Marlene Kenyana, bringing you the latest updates from the Weather Center. It is Tuesday, the 20th of September, 2050. Now, for the last couple of weeks, we've seen a continuation of wet weather activities over most places within our country, and this has resulted into flooding, especially for Tesla region, where we've seen roads being cut off. You can see a car there almost being swept away by these floods. And most of the homes have also been flooded, and indeed, this has resulted into people being displaced. We can see a picture of, the, of people who have been displaced from their homes. Now, with all that happening, we have also a tragic landslide which is happening in Wududa district. We've had almost four villages being covered. Now, this is one of the villages where this occurred. Now, on the other side, we also have northeastern Uganda drying up because of prolonged dry spells. This has become a story that everyone is talking about. You can see the dry land there and also some of the crops that have been dried up. Now let's take a look at today's weather conditions. Well, according to our satellite images in the morning, we had cloudy conditions along the Lake Victoria Basin, developing into light showers over most places within this uh, region, including the nation's capital. And the rest of the country, we had partly cloudy conditions. But again in the afternoon, we had a heavy downpour along the western sector, as well as parts of Arua and also along Lake Albert. And the rest of the country were holding on to partly cloudy conditions. Now the image taken over Africa shows that we still have a high pressure center over the Atlantic. Ocean, and what this means is that moist winds will be blowing from this area towards our country, together with the Congo air mass also moving in, and that is responsible for the rains we're seeing over western Uganda. Now, we also have moist winds that are coming from the Indian Ocean towards our country, and that has resulted into rainfall over the eastern sector. Now, let's find out what tomorrow has in store for us. Well, we start off with light showers that will be along Kabale Highlands, and we're expecting cloudy conditions across the western region, and for the northern sector, we'll have intervals of sun sunny and cloudy conditions. Pretty sunny for the Karamoja region. We'll see cloudy conditions there across the eastern sector. And for the Lake Victoria Basin, we could see a couple of showers. It will be another morning for you to have your umbrella handy. Now, later, as the day goes on, in the afternoon, we're expecting rainfall of most places within the country. And we're forecasting a maximum of 23 for Kabale Highlands, 28 for Western Uganda. And across the northern stretch, we will have sunny intervals. We have sizzling hot conditions across the Karamoja region at a maximum of 38. We'll have rain still for eastern Uganda and for the Lake Victoria Basin who will still be dealing with most of those wet weather conditions at a maximum of 29 degrees Celsius. Well with that we come to the end of today's weather report. Thank you very much for being with me. Have a blessed day tomorrow. Well, we've just seen what is likely to happen in 2050, that is, if we do not take action against climate change, because some of these weather extremes are already happening now. For example, we can see the flooding there, which happened in western Uganda. This disastrous kind of flooding happened in Kasese district. This swept away most homes, leading to loss of lives, and of course property, most bridges were swept away, and this has just happened. You can see there it was during a heavy downpour. Red Cross trying to do some rescue and some of the homes that were swept away by these floods. Now, similarly, we've had local bridges being washed away by intense runoff resulting for the, from the excessive rains in western Uganda. We can see some of the roads have also been cut off, people trying to cross through some of these flooded roads. You can see a truck there also stuck in the roadside. Now, the similar situation is happening in Teso region, where plantations are even uh, being destroyed. We have one of the residents trying to explain her condition. <coughs> This cassava I weeded very, very well, but there was too much rain, there were floods, and now the roots are rotten, even though the stems are dry. And according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Uganda is a humanitarian risk hotspot for flooding due to the projected increase in rainfall events in the period 2020 to 2050. Well, because of this continuation in rainfall, we've also seen cases of landslides, especially in mountainous areas. We've seen that on the mountains of Kasese and also on the slopes of Mount Elgon. For example, Wududa district, we had a tragic one in 2010, burying three villages. This is one of the villages where this occurred. And when this continues to happen, we shall see vulnerable people even becoming more vulnerable. You can see people there who have lost their homes are now being displaced because of this kind of flooding.
And on the other side, we had prolonged drought over the Karamoja region, resulting from persisting dry spells. We've seen that this has resulted in two lack of food. You can see some of the plantations that have dried up. This is even likely to become more worse, and temperatures will be rising up dramatically. We're already seeing continuous outbreaks of diseases. For example, we have a 10-year report of uh, Western Uganda, which is indicating that the rise in temperature is leading to increase in malaria cases. Now, according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the projected mean temperature over Uganda is about 1.4 degrees Celsius by 2050 and human activities are the major contributors of climate change. We've also noted that 90% of the disasters happening today are climate related. We cannot wait till 2050 to realize these changes in weather. We have to look at the best ways to minimize these weather extremes in which the international negotiations under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change is discussing a target to keeping the rise in temperature to not more than 2 degrees Celsius by 2100. But how do we contribute to this kind of target? We have to significantly reduce emission of greenhouse gases, we have to carry out reforestation, and we need to do this now because what we do today marks the decisions to our future. Well, with that, we nicely end this session. My name is Marlene Kenyana. As you have just seen, climate change will increasingly affect our day-to-day -day weather. But we don't have to wait until 2050 to witness its impact. Already today, many parts of the world are experiencing more intense rainfall, floods, storms, heat waves, droughts. We need to minimize these negative impacts, and the best way to do that is to rapidly and significantly reduce our emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. We have the power and the responsibility to create a better future for ourselves and for those to come. But we need action at least at two levels. We need a new, robust, global climate change agreement. And we need local policy that points us toward green growth and action by investors, industry, cities, and regions. Then we can arrive at a stable, climate-neutral future. Let's work together to make our societies safer and more resilient. Please join me in taking action on climate change. Thank you.